All right, hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, wait a minute, one second. Hello. 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 Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Today I'm bringing you an article from Good Housekeeping. What you need to know about the carnivore diet. You can judge for yourself, but I'm calling this fake news. All right, let's get to it. What you need to, what you need to know about the carnivore diet. It works just like it sounds, and it's a totally terrible idea. By Jacqueline London. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, from uh, September 8th, just uh, maybe five days ago. This is looking good. All right, let's scroll down. The carnivore diet is an extreme eating plan that calls for consuming just beef, water, and salt. It can lead to vitamin and mineral deficiencies that cause bone loss and organ damage or failure. Eating more vegetables and plant-based food is a better nutritional and environmental choice. Ooh, really? Alrighty then. Just in case we hadn't gotten our fill of meat based diets this year, we see you keto. Right here. The carnivore diet has arrived to challenge any remaining proponents of vegetables. Insert eye roll here. The diet, which excludes veggies, fruit, legumes, nuts, seeds, and dairy products is held as a weight loss and autoimmune disease cure by its proponents, namely Michaela Peterson, blogger extraordinaire and daughter of lifestyle guru, Jordan Peterson. I give them this, they chose a really nice picture. She's a cutie, wow. It's an Instagram photo. All right, cool. I follow her, by the way. Maybe I'll throw her a IG link in the description for you. Okay. Carnivore enthusiasts tout the life-changing benefits of their demanding diet, which includes consuming beef, water, and salt, plus bourbon, according to Michaela. <laughs> Bourbon's a little sp bourbon is a little spendy where I am. So what I do is my Chinese bourbon. Yeah. Anyway, where are we at? Only other important components. Infrared saunas, extreme heat and cryotherapy, extreme cold, duh, both of which proclaim metabolic benefits when used regularly. Why you shouldn't try it. What this trend lacks is scientific backing. Really? It makes up for a diehard enthusiasm among beef believers. <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to start a, oh, there's probably already a hashtag out there. Hashtag beef believers. Breakfast tomorrow. But social media followings shouldn't obscure all the reasons why a carnivore diet isn't a good idea. There's no scientific evidence proving it's safe. While overreaching research findings support the concept that low carb eating plans can expedite weight loss, few have been studied for longer than a year to evaluate their efficacy and safety for lifelong use. But this diet isn't just a low carb plan. It's a completely exclusionary plan that exceptionally, that's exceptionally restrictive for everyone. There's no way to survive on a meat-only diet. Uh, really? <laughs> Without suffering some serious health problems. <laughs> Vitamin and mineral deficiencies can result in unnecessary physical pain. Hmm bone loss, organ damage, and 
ultimately organ failure. <gasps> There's a survey here. What's the survey? Let's see. Would you try the carnivore diet? Well, let me click yes. This is absolutely insane. <gasps> Why is this even a thing? There's no yes. Basically two no's. Okay. Looks delicious. All right. Let's keep going. You're skipping the most nutrient-packed anti-inflammatory foods on the planet. <laughs> anti-inflammatory? Skipping? Not on the carnivore. Anyway, so while many low-carb lovers may be tempted to take things to the next level, the carnivore diet implies that 0% of your calories come from dietary carbohydrates. A practice that's highly unsustainable for the long haul. That's true, especially when you consider how many delicious, nutrient-packed, low-carb foods you'd normally green light, like spinach, almonds, salmon, and avocado. Um, salmon is actually a meat it's in the animal kingdom there. Anyway, let's keep going. All right. Across the board, diets high in vegetables, fruit, plant-based oils, nuts and seeds, whole grains, legumes, and some dairy products are some of the most nutritious in the world. Ones that have been specifically touted for their auto autoimmune flare-fighting benefits. For example, all the scientific data that she has not quoted anywhere. <laughs> For example, the Mediterranean diet encourages plant-based foods above all else and has been linked to reducing chronic disease risk. Okay, there's a link. Okay, good. He did quote some sources. All right, good for you. In a plethora of populations, that's because produce is filled with plant-based antioxidants called phytonutrients not seen in animal products. Maybe those animals ate that and it's in the animals. Anyway, let's continue. Sherman Williams. What's up, Sherman? All right. <laughs> it's not a smart way to lose weight or alleviate any symptoms. Not a smart way. Okay. Any weight loss that carnivores have seen as a result of going all meat all the time, it's likely due to the calorie restriction. <laughs> Have you seen my macros? Sean Baker, have you seen him throw down? <coughs> anyway, calorie restriction. <laughs> Which is nearly impossible to avoid if you're cutting out nearly all food groups. No, fat's pretty high in the calories, but uh, you know, we eat. The meat eaters, that like the true carnivores, they, <laughs> they eat a lot. All right, let's keep it going. And if you're curious about trying the diet to treat an ailment, elimination diets are supposed to be temporary or conducted under the tutelage, tutelage of a physician and or dietitian. After identifying the foods that may personally trigger symptoms of autoimmune disease, other food groups are slowly added back into your diet so you're not missing out on anything you need for a prolonged period. Wow, I have some good tempting pictures here. Making me hungry. Okay. Eating only mm, okay. eating only meat is terrible for the environment. I don't agree, but let's continue. Even if you could keep up with an bunless burger, 
Diet for Life, there are still some other reasons I'd strongly discourage you from going carnivore. Relying on animals as your sole source of substance is not just tough on you physically, it's not so great for the long-term health of the environment either. Agricultural practices continue to improve in terms of environmental responsibility and preservation, but they still contribute about 30% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions, not to mention the water and land required to keep livestock production ongoing. Water and land. Hmm. Do vegetables need this? Okay, let's move on. All that restriction probably isn't great for your mental health. The mental and emotional difficulty of staying on a diet this extreme can be downright debilitating for most people. While I'm normally in favor of supporting anyone and everyone in their eating styles, I'm highly opposed to the idea that better health and weight loss can only or best be achieved through deprivation, restriction, and pushing the boundaries of what humans are biologically meant to do. Let me hold it in. No single food or nutrient that can make or break your progress when consumed in isolation. Did I read that right? No single food or nutrient that can make or break your progress when consumed in isolation. Yes, okay. In order to achieve health and happiness, we have to make choices that promote a balance of mental and emotional enjoyment and physical life Sustaining nutrition. Guess this is the end. The bottom line. Steer clear of a meat-only diet. Eating more vegetables. There's a link to another housekeeping article. Eating more vegetables plus other plant-based foods and protein sources is universally, universally, a better choice for both you and our planet. Any diet that puts a cap on the world's most nutrient-dense foods is simply not worth the risk. Hmm. <laughs> oh, is there, any, is there anything left? Let me scroll down. Yes, okay, good. That's it. Pause. Let's okay. Shout out to Michaela Peterson, her blog titled Don't Eat That at MichaelaPeterson.com. That's how I knew about this fake news article from Good Housekeeping. If you want to be part of the, the community over at MichaelaPeterson.com, check out her blog, link in the description, join the many others following her. Alright, thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe. Comment below.